Hello everyone and welcome to another Mods World video. I am your host Maxwell. Today we're going to be doing my standard and taking a look at the top 5 mods of recent weeks. I'm still deep into testing out the Dark Souls order and so far everything is going really well, but please do keep those suggestions rolling on in. If you want to see the progress I will once again leave a pinned comment with the order in, but for now, let's get into the video. First up is Kabu's Argonian Fins for masculine and feminine Argonian textures Lizard 1K, which is a proper mouthful. This mod is going to be fixing an issue I've always had with the Argonians. They just don't lean far enough into their lizard design for my liking. Those horns and feathery stuff is cool and I'm happy to have those kind of options, but this new addition is adding something a touch more realistic. I say as if I have any knowledge of herpetology. These fins are essentially acting as new hairstyles, allowing you to customise your Argonians in a totally new way. The fins are made in an extremely intelligent way too. The author decided that because these additions are made from the same scales that cover the body, they could be introduced in a way that would have uniformity with the rest of those textures. There is a huge explanation on the mods page as to how the author has gone about this, which makes for interesting reading, and it covers it far better than my very, very abridged explanation. For the best results, use these new textures alongside the masculine and feminine Argonian textures. They will blend perfectly as the fins were created using that mod as a base. However, vanilla Argonians still look cool with these on. Kabu's Argonian fins are going to cost you 21.9 megabytes, which is going to be pretty easy for anyone who really loves Argonians to fit in. I do actually plan on creating a mod series based on getting the best out of certain races, and this will 100% be making its way into that video. There really isn't much more to say about them though. You like your lizard people looking like a lizard? Then download this mod and put it in with your other character appearance mods in the logical load order. Moving swiftly on to a mod that's going to increase the enjoyment of those Radiant Quests. I am of course talking about Radiant Quest Point System. There have been many attempts to make the Radiant Quests more rewarding, fun or immersive. In essence, this is the latest iteration of Perks for Bounties, however, this one comes a little more reserved than that. The Radiant Quest point system makes it so those perks are hidden behind multiple bounties. You can't simply wander off and return to a brand new perk point as that would make farming bounties insanely overpowered. But if I'm willing to waste hours of my life running off killing chiefs, dragons, giants and the like, then I do deserve to be rewarded properly. I will say this mod is only going to make the system more rewarding and isn't a fix for the repetitive nature of Radiant Quests. That's potentially another video I could see myself making in the future, if people would be into that. Anyway, back to the mod. RQPS is going to set you back 106.9 kilobytes, so will very easily slot into your order. Also, helping that out is just how compatible it is. I'm currently running Headhunter and I'm pleasantly surprised that I was able to use these together. That certainly made making this video much easier to do. I slotted this in with my other existing quest edit section of the logical load order and everything is working great. Moving on to a mod that I have been extremely excited for. This one is going to fit into any order that seeks out more of a challenge but wants it to come from a less common source. Sure you've made the enemies superbly tough, you might die in a single hit but there is something missing. Maybe. You don't want the enemies too hard, but think Skyrim systems make you basically immortal. Well, install Immersive Saving Sleep to Save. This is one of those fantastically named mods that explains exactly what it does in the title. Speaking for myself here, but maybe others do the same as me. Usually, I will save before entering a dungeon, sometimes before entering a room. This amount of saving is only increased when I have a difficult game because dying is far more likely. Immersive saving removes the ability to just save at random, and I will tell you one thing, this makes everything more tense and I am loving it. Actually that's kind of two things. When you install this mod, you will also receive 5 potions that allow you to make saves. Use them wisely. So far I'm holding on to mine because I don't know when I might need them, and for me that's just another part of the fun. I'm currently trying this out with a bunch of random sleep based mods to see what works and I haven't had any issues as of yet. Sleep to save is also not going to take up that much space. At 163 kilobytes, this is probably one of the lowest cost actual game changers you will ever see. 
but I do feel like I've said that before, so who knows. I have this mod sitting in with my game mechanics alongside sleep to level, adding a massive amount of necessity to something I rarely want to do in game. I rarely do it in real life. Up next we have another mod from the fantastically named Daddy McHuge Nuts, the Immersive Compass. This is going to add in a whole new mechanic for those immersion hunters out there. The in-game compass is an overwhelmingly insane feature. It gave you far more information than you should ever have had access to. Enemies you haven't spotted, locations you don't know about, and a built-in GPS. The Dragonborn had access to ways in a very early beta test it would seem. With Immersive Compass installed, you will finally have a more immersive answer to how the character knows where to go all the damn time. Included are two types of compass, the standard and advanced. Whilst holding one of these in your hands and holding the block button, you will be able to bring up your UI compass. Drop it and the UI goes away, it's really that simple. But there is another cool feature. The compass has had all of the quest markers removed unless you're holding the quest journal as well. This is great because it acts as if you're following hints you've learned from quest givers, NPCs and random information that you see along the way. With this, I can at least pretend that the whole UI makes more sense. You can get your hands on the compass by clearing out bosses or playing the main story. Do be sure to loot those bosses though. I'm not sure if I would use this outside of an immersive build because it is going to make your time a lot harder. Having said that, most of us kinda know our way around Tamriel better than we do our own home. This mod has a very low cost of 7.4 megabytes, which for what it does is more than fair. I can see people getting very into this one. I have this all the way down with my map mods, but I am sure higher spots like loot leveled list or probably even game mechanics would be just fine. Finally, it's time for my top mod of the week. We've had a massively good collection over these last few weeks and I feel like I've probably missed covering a few mods that would ordinarily have made it onto my list. But for me right now, Lost Races of Aetherius has to be the top pick. This mod is going to be adding in 5 brand new races for you to play on. In addition to the vanilla races, you will be able to play as a Deep Elf, otherwise known as a Dwemer, a Sea Elf, also known as a Malma, a Snow Elf, aka Falmar, a Zeishi or Akivari, the Wild Elf, which you may know as an Aliad. All of these races act like those already in the game with their own major and minor skills, abilities and perks. I won't go into all of them, so definitely do check the link in the description, but as a taster, let's talk about the Aliad. If you happen to pick the Wind Elf, you gain the major skill in Alteration and minor skills in Conjuration, Destruction, Enchanting, Restoration and Speech. When it comes to abilities, we get a new one called Dawn's Ancestor. This is going to give you a 15% chance to absorb magicka from incoming spells, as well as making your alteration last 50% longer. This is going to synergize with the secondary ability, Aedra and Daedra. Whilst you're under the effects of a flesh spell, an alteration spell might I add, your conjuration is going to last 50% longer. Every single one of the new races act in a fairly similar way, with excellent synergizing builds. They are however far too strong for vanilla, which would effectively make the default races pointless. This mod however is designed with something else in mind. Simon Magus's Aetherius races. Together you will have all of the vanilla races expanded upon and balanced out with lore friendly synergistic, I'm not sure that's a word, new abilities as well as 5 brand new races that seemingly slide into that game perfectly. You'd be forgiven for thinking they weren't always there, and because they're lore friendly races, that's only made easier. This is however going to set you back 56.6 megabytes, in addition to a few extra slots for the race compatibility patch which is required, and whatever vanilla races mod you decide to use alongside it. Sneaky truth is I'm actually using Imperius right now, and it is fully compatible, however, the vanilla races do feel stronger because Imperius feels stronger. I would definitely suggest keeping this with Aetherius should you wish to add it to your game. I have this mod sat in with my other character creation edits, and so far everything's working out fantastically. But that's going to do it for me. As I said earlier, if you're here for the order then do check the pinned comments. If you're here for the new mods, then check the description because I have them all linked in there. 
Alongside those, I also have links to my Discord and the Xbox Mod subreddit, which are two helpful resources for anyone after a helping hand. If this has been helpful, I would really appreciate those likes, comments, and of course subscriptions. Those coupled with the average view duration seriously help push my work out further. If you're listening this far into the video, let me know because I seriously do appreciate it. And thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you all in the next one.